Welcome to the three M's, Manchester, Munich and Milan. We're going to be rolling through these places quickly. They were the first places we went to on this football adventure. And memory could be a bit hazy because it's a long, long time ago. We started off in England. So we started off by going to Manchester. And the first couple of trips, so Manchester and Milan, we decided to test out a package, a package trip. So for the Manchester game, we went with Thomas Cook, uh, a blast on the past, that name. And for uh, Inter Milan, I've, I actually forget the name of the company that we used, but we booked a package tour through them, including flights. Uh, for Munich, we just went on our own accord and booked everything ourselves. Not a lot to report back from Manchester, in all fairness. Uh, at the time, we picked Man City because they had been recently been taken over. So there was a lot of buzz about the club they were also playing Liverpool so as Liverpool fans absolutely fine although we did have tickets for the home end so we had to be a bit you know very very careful very coy as well thankfully the game itself Sunday the 21st of February 2010 and the game itself was dreadful it, it, nil nil dog shit just, just nothing to feed back about on the game I think there was two shots on target it was a Sunday afternoon uh, it would have been on TV and it was dreadful Nil nil, nothing happened. But the package tour itself was was quite entertaining. So it included a stadium tour, which we which we went on to. Uh, that was good fun. We also thoroughly enjoyed the stadium tour purely because the tour guide was was phenomenal. He hated Man United as well, which is understandable. And he gave us a bit of fun facts, a couple of fun facts. Uh, the best one being on the old Manchester City badge, it basically there was uh, I believe it was either an eagle or a dragon, whatever one it was, and it had three stars uh, above the crest. So the quiz question was, what do these three stars mean? Uh, and apparently, according to him, the answer was, they mean absolutely nothing. There is no reason for those stars to be on the badge at all. Obviously, since then, uh, and now, the badge has changed. But have a look at the old Man City badge. It's quite interesting. Manchester itself, again, a lot's happened between, you know, 2010 and, and the recording of this podcast. We were staying... Uh, Staying relatively in the city centre, it, it rained most of the weekend, as you'd imagine. But we visited a few museums, a lot of development work going on in Manchester. And from an overall point of view, apart from the long, long train journey, we went from Brighton to Victoria and then went from Victoria to Euston, London, Euston, and then from Euston up to Manchester, Piccadilly. That's quite a journey. If I remember correctly, I think we were delayed uh, one of the ways as well. But that was, uh, that, was, that was the first game. That was the early game. The first ever one we'd done, package holiday, it was okay. And nothing to shout home about because the game was so bad and it rained all weekend. That was Manchester. So fast forward to 2011 and it was Milan, uh, city of Milan, um, an internazionale into Milan with a team we wanted to go and see. And we wanted to go and see them play Juventus. Now, there's no love lost between Turin and Milan in general. There's certainly no love lost between most teams and Juventus in general. And there is definitely no love lost between Inter Milan and Juventus. They hate each other. Absolutely despise each other. Now, we were originally meant to go and see this game in early 2011, I believe. Possibly 2010. But then the Icelandic volcano, whatever the name of it, that exploded on the very day we were going to fly out. And because of all the ash and debris and whatnot in the air, that trip got cancelled. Now, thankfully, we booked this trip as, as a, a package we wanted to see what the european package was like and thankfully that company although the name evades me now that company allowed us to go the following season same game same seats no difference in price so that was very nice of them and this was sunday the 3rd of october 2011 now the city itself uh, the city of milan is wonderful if you ever get a chance to go to duomo in the middle and have a walk up to the top it's brilliant when you get to the top on a clear day you can see the roof of the san siro now, if, even if you're just a generic architecture fan, the roof of the San Siro, I'm, I'm sure, is one of the greatest football marvels there is in terms of stadia. Google it. Roof of the San Siro. It, the red trusses and just the whole aspect of it is absolutely brilliant. When you go inside, the you, you, multicoloured sections of seats, it's just a, it's a true delight. Bit of a letdown, though, in the, in the trophy room. Although both clubs... Uh, AC Milan and Inter Milan are very successful. The, the stadium tour itself and, and the trophy room was a bit of a letdown. 
because it didn't have everything on display and it was a bit, bit grubby, but hey-ho, it is what it is. But a couple of funny things happened from uh, the trip. So first of all, on the stadium tour. On the stadium tour, the, the difference between the Inter Milan changing rooms and the AC Milan changing rooms at the time were ridiculous. You know, you go into the Inter Milan changing rooms and you might as well, it looks like Sunday League. It really does. Very, very basic. No issue. You go into the Milan changing room, the AC Milan changing room, and it was, you know, everyone was pampered. You know, luxury seats and, you know, foot warmers and all this sort of stuff. And our tour guide said to us, look, you know, what we're going to do, go and take a seat in, in, in the player's seats and we'll go through and, you know, I'll tell you whose seat you're sat in. So my brother who was there, Aaron and myself, we said, right, little competition, lads. Whoever's got the best, you know, whoever's got the best person, you know, the other lads will give them a beer. Great. No problem at all. So we all rushed and sat down in a seat. Guy gets round to me and he says, uh, he says, yeah, uh, this is the seat of Mario Yepes. Like, great, thanks. I'm, def- <laughs> I'm definitely not winning this competition at all. Uh, definitely not good. Goes around a few seats and gets round to Aaron. He says to Aaron, you've got Clarence Seydorf's seat. Oh, well, whew. I mean, I'm blown out the water. Clarence Seydorf is a legend at the game. You know, won the Champions League with three different clubs. Absolutely brilliant player. Class for, class for the Netherlands as well when he was playing. You know, oh, here we go. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to buy him a beer. Pete's going to have to buy him a beer. Aaron looks like he's won this competition. And he, gets around to, he gets around to my brother, looks at my brother, and he says, you have the best seat because you have the seat of Paolo Maldini. That's everyone, everyone in the, the room gasps, started cheering because Paolo Maldini is the AC Milan legend. One of many, but at the time, he is the AC Milan legend. And uh, yeah, my brother was very happy with that. And uh, I'm sure he thoroughly enjoyed his beers at the end of, at the, end of the day. Arse. Uh, yeah, that was fun. And, and the funniest thing of all, I was getting lost on the way back. So we stayed in the Best Western, uh, just to the north side of the city. And because, again, we're a bit new to this uh, and a bit new to going out and about travelling, where there's no love lost between the sets of fans, we kind of half expected there to be quite a bit of violence at the, at the game. So it was quite intimidating from that point of view. As a result, we said, look, lads, let's just take, take the tickets, match tickets, take a couple of euros if you want to get a drink, and that's it. Nothing else. Don't take, you know, hardly take any phones or anything like that. One of us took our phone. Um, that's my brother. Um, Aaron and myself didn't take our phones at all. Got there. Game was nil-nil. Incredible atmosphere. Um, spoke about a Manchester game being nil-nil and dreadful. This was exciting nil-nil. And some of the players that we saw, you know, Javier Zanetti, Del Piero comes off the bench for Juventus. There was plenty of chances at either end. The choreography from the Inter Milan fans behind the goal was stunning. Uh, they um, unhurled a big banner before the game and it basically had a, it was a big photo of a Juventus shirt and underneath it, a, a big toilet, uh, basically referring to Juventus as being shite, uh, basically. And that was, that was incredible to see. And it was, again, it was a night game. So it's under the lights, it's at San Siro. You know, as, as football fans will say, it's, it's a phenomenal experience, to say the least. No goals, we didn't get to hear the roar of, of the ball going in the back of the net. And that being said, there were chances in the game. Game finishes, yeah, the atmosphere's a little bit tense, but, you know, nothing, nothing untoward. Uh, normally, I'm pretty good at getting us back. I knew where we had to go, and I'd memorised some of the names of the roads. But unfortunately, at some point, I've taken a wrong turn. And we're walking around, we're getting, you know, it's, it's, it's late in the evening, we don't really know where we are. Yeah, there's three of us. So we're not getting nervous, but we're getting a bit tired now. So we've been walking for quite a while. We, we keep walking and, you know, no one knows where we are, but we think we're heading in the right direction. And this must, after a couple of hours, I think we turn around and say, you know, lads, we're, we're screwed. You know, what's going on here? And my brother pipes up, remembering that he's got his phone on him and says, oh, I've got GPS on my phone. Should we use that? There are times when you don't know whether to laugh or cry or get really angry. That was one of those times. If he wasn't my brother... I think I would have hit him then and there because we had been busting our balls off, walking around in, in, you know, places that we didn't know anything about. And after about two hours of this, he pipes up with his GPS. What? I, I I'm not even going to repeat the words on this podcast, but it was just a case of what the unbelievable. Thankfully, all of that being said, thankfully, we weren't too far away from the hotel. 
Um, that's probably the best tasting beer I think I ever had. And we stopped off at a little uh, cafe somewhere who, yeah, they're still open quite late at night and had, and had a Moretti and it was delightful. Best beer I think I've ever had. But if you weren't my brother, I think I would have whacked him one in face because that's unbelievable. The other funny thing to happen from the Milan trip, uh, by the way, the saffron risotto, delightful. Absolutely delightful. They still do it. It sublime and a nice bottle of red. Uh, Italy have got it spot on. I mean, the breakfast because the breakfasts could be better, but the rest of the food and, and the drink is, is wonderful. And I'm sure you know that if you've been to Italy before. Uh, but the other funny thing is I've done a bit of Italian at school and, you know, we like to try the language when we're away. And the word for the bill and the word for uh, a see you next Tuesday is quite similar. And I accidentally used the wrong word <laughs> after we'd had a, a three course Italian lunch at one of the uh, at one of the places we visited. Thankfully, the waiter, who I believe was an exchange student from Albania, uh, thankfully, he found the funny side and, and told me what I'd done, probably because he, he's seen us trying throughout the afternoon. But yeah, accidentally called the wait of a see you next Tuesday. Uh, whoops, not good. But overall from Milan, again, the experience was very good. The package holiday was OK. The hotel room was fine. It's the best Western. You know, you know what you're going to get with that. The tickets for the game were very good. The good seats, night game. You know, they were very nice to us in allowing us to you know, rebook free of charge and, and charge no extra for that because of, you know, the volcanic eruption. And overall, you know, Milan, very nice place. And that was, the game was it itself was Sunday the 3rd of October. Now, a few weeks later, we ended up plopping off to Munich. And this is a game that we booked ourselves. So we booked our flights. We decided to, because of who we were going to see, you could just turn up on the day, get tickets or you know, go to the ticket office in town and do it that way. So Germany, Munich. Why Munich? I don't know. There's just something about Bavaria. There's something about Munich. Loads to see and do. Plenty of things to see and do. It was October, so it was cold. And there was four of us this time. So it was Aaron, myself, my brother and our friend Moose who came along. I think we were there for three or four nights. And it was, again, it was a delightful experience. At the time, 1860 Munich. So the secondary team in Munich, obviously after Bayern Munich, they're playing at the, the relatively new Allianz Stadium. And this game, they were playing SC Paderborn. I think it was a German second division. And it was on a Friday night. So again, another night game under the lights. And the cool thing about the Allianz Stadium is that they light it up depending on who's playing. So if it's Bayern Munich, it's lit up in red. If it's 1860 Munich, and they, they're playing like a light blue. The stadium is lit up in light blue. I think if Germany play there, it's in all white, I think. Anyway, so Munich itself, again, I, you know, I, don't, know what, I don't know what more to say about it. My favourite part of Munich uh, was turning up, getting to the, uh, the U-Bahn station and playing around on the ticket machine. Because we were there for a little while, we wanted to make travellers cheap and effective as possible. Played around on the system and found a, at the time, it was a four, it was a four day travel card so for your s-bahn your u-bahn your buses trams whatever it was a four-day travel card for up to five adults and it was 19 euro 60 not per person just 19 euro 60 absolutely brilliant absolutely loving it you know i was like great round it up to 20 euros divide that by four people that's five euros per person Divide that by four because of four days. That's like one euro 25 per person per day for travel. But music to my ears, absolute music to my ears that was. Absolutely delightful. Thoroughly enjoyed that. That's the best part of Munich. But it's so much to see and do. We went on a, a stadium tour of the Olympia Stadium. So the massive Olympic village that they've got in Munich. Uh, the Olympia Stadium was where the football teams used to play before the Allianz Arena was built. And we got to go on that stadium tour, quite a nice stadium, nice big open bowl. Again, it's got a really funky roof. And you can go up the, in the Olympic Park, you can go up the, the big tower and have a look across Munich. And that's a phenomenal thing to do. Again, I recommend when you're there in Munich, definitely go up that tower on a clear day. It's brilliant. Just it, it, it's, some of the things you see are great. But the uh, Olympic Stadium Tour, was also good fun because you got to play a little game of football on the grass. 
So you could actually go on to the grass where, you know, the 1974 World Cup final uh, was held. Um, I think West Germany beat the, the Netherlands there. Uh, 2 1 if memory serves. And you're on the same game. Oh, it's just absolutely brilliant. Munich's also got a lot, lot to see and do. As you can imagine, it's got a lot of uh, history related to 1920s and 1930s Germany and certain individuals and certain regimes of the time. And there's a lot of buildings that you can go and see. I, again, I'd recommend that. Uh, you know, it's whether we like it or not, it's part of, it's part of history. And you know, they are interesting buildings to see. And of course, beer. Beer, 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 more beer. Hofbrauhaus House is the most famous of beer houses, I think, uh, in terms of, you know, where you go and get a beer with, you know, it's, it's got a recognisable name, basically. Drink loads of beer, ate loads of food, had a wonderful time. The game itself were finished 1-1. Still hadn't seen a victory yet. Uh, finished 1-1. Finished uh, the biggest novelty of the game though was being able to drink and not all of us i uh, have to point out that moose uh moose is devout muslim so no drinking for him so it's for my brother myself and and aaron but it was a novelty of being able to walk into the stadium uh buy a beer and just have a beer watching football we're not used to that in england and to be able to do that over in munich delightful and i've got to stop using the word delightful i've used it too much so far in these episodes but munich in itself a really cool place. You could spend four or five days there. You, you, you know, you wouldn't get bored. Put it that way. Loads to see and do. Uh, the funny side note of Munich itself was we went into uh, a church. I think it's called the Assen, Assenkirk or Assen Church. One of the two. And inside it, it it's like a church you've never, ever seen before. Uh, the ornaments, the, the way it's designed internally. It's like you're going into Aladdin's cave. It really, really is. And apologies in advance, a bit of blasphemy, because uh, what happened was I'd walked into the church, wasn't paying attention to where I was going, and I accidentally missed a step. So I tripped up. I tripped up going down the step, and without thinking about it, said, oh, holy shit, to which the other guys were on the floor laughing, and none of them would tell me what, because I didn't realise what I said. Uh, it wasn't until we got outside and uh, they said, uh, yeah, by the way, uh, you, you know, you, you just committed blasphemy in church. This is what you said. And well, yeah, we, we all had a laugh about it. But I hadn't realised at the time that I said it. Uh, whoops. Uh, my apologies. But they were the first three trips. They were the first three trips in general. So the three M's, Manchester, Munich and Milan. All I can say, if it was to summarise the three places in general, do go to them. I think it's pretty much every place that we have spoken about on the travel section of the podcast is a case of go to them. You know, if it's not worth going, we'll tell you. But yeah, loads to see and do in each place. Really good fun. Only saw two goals in three games. One game was turgid. One game was really, really good. The, the nil-nil at the uh, Inter Milan and the 1860 Munich Paderborn game. Uh, it was, as we say in Spanish, it was Massa Menos. It was all right. It was cold. It was cheap. And it was, you know, nice to see the stadium. You can't go wrong with that. Had a great time. And yes, that was that. And it'd be a few months until we went to the next game. And that would take us to West Wales. Join us next week for West Wales. Hasta luego.